So, good morning. I'm Dr. Ashley Evans, the founder of the Ashley Exchange International. Um, thank you for joining me this morning for day 10 of 31 Days of Proverbs and Prayers. So, uh, we're going to jump right in. Um, I'll do a quick opening prayer. So Heavenly Father, thank you so much for waking us up this morning. Thank you for allowing us to gather together to just dive deeper into your word. Father God, we thank you for the wisdom that is being imparted every single day that we are reading your scripture, meditating on your scripture, and internalizing your scripture. Father God, I pray that every single thing that is said is inspired by the Holy Spirit, Lord. And I just ask that you would not allow my flesh to speak, Lord God, but let your spirit consume me and saturate my heart that everything that is said glorifies you and edifies every single person who watches this video live or, re or, on, re or on replay. Father God, we give you all the honor and the glory in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. All right. So, um, so Proverbs 10 was like a collection of a lot of, um, insightful things that we typically hear, uh, from different individuals. Typically, we hear these things from older people, but I appreciate it um, reading through it. So we're going to read through some of them, and then I'll highlight um, some that kind of magnify uh, another significant um, area that is often highlighted through the Word of God. So Proverbs 10, verse 1, it says, Solomon's Proverbs, A wise son brings joy to his father, but a foolish son heartache to his mother. Ill-gotten gains do not profit anyone, but righteous, righteousness rescues from death. The Lord will not let the righteous go hungry, but he denies the wicked what they crave. And so here we just see that Solomon is basically giving a multitude of nuggets of wisdom. Uh, one thing that stood out was in verse 2 when it said ill-gotten gains. Now, a couple of other versions that I read said treasures of wickedness. And I think that's important because right now we see a lot of people who are obtaining treasures, but they're obtaining it through wicked ways, evil activity, and it's not driven by God. So it's not being received through God. And so I think that is something to understand because it says it does not profit anyone. Yet people who do indulge in getting wealth or attaining um, riches and, and, and trying to gain things through um, ungodly practices, oftentimes they feel like they are profiting. But we recognize that it does not lead to anything positive. Um it does more harm. It's almost like a slow death. Like you're sitting here building, building, building. Like, yes, I'm getting all this money. Yes, I'm getting all this success. And then all of a sudden, the reality is, is that you set yourself up for being ruined, you know. But when he says, but the righteousness rescues from death. I thought that was important because even though sometimes we look at others who are getting things through ungodly ways, Sometimes it can be discouraging thinking to yourself like, man, I'm not where I fit, where I should be or I'm behind or, you know, God, I'm, I'm steady trying to be faithful. And the reality is, is that although it may not, you may not see the swift results as those who, who rush and try to, you know, cut corners and go through ungodly practices, regardless of that, we are rescued from death. And that says a lot because remember, those of us who are righteous, one of the promises we have is eternal life with Christ. And that's priceless. And so we can be grateful for that. We can be grateful knowing that that is afforded to us. Um, in verse 4 where it says, idle hands make one poor, but diligent hands brings riches. And this is important because of the simple fact that a lot of times, there there are times where we can get lazy. <laughs> and it's not godly for us to be lazy at any in any aspect of our lives. And sometimes we'll see people who, you know, at one point they were thriving, but then they got lazy. They didn't want to do anything. And ultimately that does not do anything good for us. It actually hinders us um, in our ability to be diligent, in our ability to 
honor what God has given us. Like that's a form of stewardship, being diligent with our hands. Why? Because he's given us the ability to do things. And so for us to just sit and not do anything, it is like an offense to God. And so therefore he won't bless those who are just sitting and not honoring and stewarding what he's given and the abilities that he's given us. In verse five, it says, the son who gathers during summer is prudent. The son who sleeps during harvest is disgraceful. And when I read that, it reminded me of the um, the analogy that was given regarding the ants and how they function and how they're very strategic and how they store up in preparation for certain seasons. And that was um, in Proverbs 6 when we studied that day. For verse 6 says, Blessings are on the head of the righteous, but the mouth of the wicked conceals violence. Verse 7, The remembrance of the righteous is a blessing, but the name of the wicked will rot. Now, um, when it says the name of the wicked will rot, rot also means to be forgotten. And so the fact is when we are living a righteous life, you know, we will be remembered and that is a blessing. But those who have done evil things, they will be forgotten. And, um, you know, it's interesting because when I talk to some people, one of their things is like they want to be remembered but the reality is is that your ability to be remembered is based upon your your ability to remain righteous with the lord and to be obedient and to fulfill the purpose and the plan he has for you um verse 8 says a wise heart accepts commands but foolish lips will be destroyed and when it says a wise heart accepts commands that means a wise heart is remains teachable like you're you're you accept knowledge you accept instruction um, you don't allow yourself to just constantly babble, babble, babble without allowing yourself to hear from the Holy Spirit. Um, verse nine says the one who lives with integrity lives securely, but whoever perverts his ways will be found out. A sly wink of the eye causes grief and foolish lips will be destroyed. The mouth of the righteous is a fountain of life, but the mouth of the wicked conceals violence. Hatred stirs up conflicts, but love covers all offenses. Wisdom is found on the lips of the discerning, but a rod is for the back of the one who lacks sense. The wise store up knowledge, but the mouth of the fool hastens destruction. The wealth of the wicked is his fortified city. The poverty of the poor is their destruction. The reward of the righteous is life. The wages of the wicked is punishment. The one who follows instruction is on the path to life, but the one who rejects correction goes astray. And so once again, we're seeing this common theme of those who are righteous, those who are wise, those who um, who honor God, there there is eternal life, there is um, wealth, there's there's a security that we receive, and even here there is one emphasis. There's one common theme that I noticed was the emphasis of the mouth, meaning what we say, um, and the information that we share. I thought that was important because we know that the scripture says life and death lie within the power, like life and death lie within the power of the tongue. And so the fact that he's highlighting, you know, the what we say through mouth, lips, that says something about how it's connected to wisdom. Like we can identify and see wisdom based upon what people say. And you can tell when someone is being highly... Um, belligerent, you know, they're saying things and you're like, that's not wise. The reality is, is that they have not yet gained an understanding of the importance of stewarding what you say well. Um, verse number 18, it says, the one who conceals hatred has lying lips and whoever spreads slander is a fool. When there are many words, sin is unavoidable. But the one who controls his lips is prudent. The tongue of the righteous is pure silver. The heart of the wicked is, a little, is of little value. The lips 
of the righteous feed many, but fools die for lack of sense. Lord's blessings enriches, and he adds no painful effort to it. As shameful conduct is pleasure for a fool, so wisdom is for a person of understanding. What the wicked dreads will come to him, but what the righteous desire will be given to him, to them. When the whirlwind passes, the wicked are no more, but the righteous are secure forever. Like vinegar to the teeth and smoke to the eyes. So the slacker is to the one who sends him on, on an it. errand. Oh, sorry. Siri wants to talk. All right. The fear of the Lord prolongs life, but the years of the wicked are cut short. And even here, this is important to know because a lot of times people don't realize that your life is cut short by the way you live it. So sometimes people think, oh, well, I'm just going to live my best life for this many years. And then when I get this age, I'll commit to living for the Lord. But what we don't realize is that when we choose to live a life that doesn't honor God, um, it cuts off our years. It's kind of similar to how, you know, the scripture talks about when we don't honor our mother and father and it, our, our years are shed when we don't honor them. And so in the same capacity, just imagine like God is our father. So we live a wicked life. We are shedding years off of our life. Verse 28 says, the hope of the righteous is joy, but the expectation of the wicked will perish. The way of the Lord is a stronghold for the honorable, but destruction awaits the malicious. The righteous will never be shaken, but the wicked will not remain on the earth. The mouth of the righteous produces wisdom, but a perverse tongue will be cut out. The lips of the righteous know what is appropriate, but the mouth of the wicked only what is perverse. And so once again, we see a lot of comparing and contrasting between what does righteousness look like and what does um, someone who is wicked or not um, choosing to live according to the word of God look like. And unfortunately, like there are so many consequences to choosing to live a life where, you know, your speech is perverse, living a life where you do commit wicked acts, living a life where you're lying all the time, living a life where you're choosing to try to make your own way instead of honoring God's way. And so it's so important for us to, even though like he's giving all these nuggets, each one is something that we can apply to our personal life. Each one creates an opportunity for us to, to just reflect and pause because I know at some point in each of our lives, we were on the verge of, of functioning in a very, um, in a way where we lack sense. Um, that I know there have been times where I know for myself there are times where I would be very angry, I'd be upset. What I was saying was very far from godly, and the reality is is that God needed to take me through that transformation. And so this is not to say you will be perfect. I, I do want to emphasize that this is not to say you will be perfect, but it is to say there is something better. So if you have seen a pattern of, you know, ungodly behavior, if you have seen a pattern of speaking things that are not godly, if you have seen a pattern of, um, you know, dishonoring or being manipulative or, you know, once you see those patterns, understand that when you come to Christ, there's an opportunity to shift from that behavior. There's an opportunity to, um, to begin walking in the righteousness of Christ. And, you know, that is such a blessing because, even when we're reading this, we see what is afforded to us as believers in Christ. We see that we, we re receive long life. We see that we are secured. I think that secure element is so important because oftentimes our, in our ability to not trust God is because we, we don't feel secure. Not realizing that God gives us security when we are living a righteous life. Now, the thing we have to understand is security does not equate to us getting everything we want. Security equates to us being provided for, though, meaning our needs are met, meaning we are protected, meaning we are covered, even in the midst of the trials and tribulations, um, meaning that we know our destination, 
is to go is to be with Christ in heaven. We have eternal life. So that is the type of security that is afforded to us in and sometimes we overlook that because sometimes we're so focused on what we want to receive in this world right now, the tangible blessings, you know, the marriage, the house, the kids, all of that. But ultimately, one thing that is highlighted throughout the scripture are like the intangible things, the things that, you know, we can't necessarily see all the time and how we are significantly blessed when we choose to live a life of wisdom and honoring God and when we choose to be mindful about the words that we use and how we speak how we respond and what we say to other people and so I mean there's a lot in here and I know it can impact people in different spaces but honestly like I just thought this was really good because even when you do have your own children even if there's somebody it doesn't even have to be your child even if there's a friend who you know often struggles with doing the things of Christ. This is an opportunity to help give them little nuggets of, of wisdom that can help shift the pace in which they're going, that can help redirect them back on the road that God has designed for them. And so um, we're going to go ahead and pray. Um, one of the prayer points for sure is just covering our tongue. Um, I know that oftentimes we say a lot of things and sometimes it can be driven by our emotions and our emotions are fickle. You know, we can't depend on those. We can feel it, but it's not something that should dictate what we say and how we operate with other people. And so definitely want to cover um, our tongue and then just constantly praying that as we're reading the scriptures, our heart is receiving the, um, the word of God and it's becoming embedded on our heart to where there's instant application. You know, we're instantly able to apply the insight that is being given to us here. So, Hallelujah. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord God, we lift up your name on this morning, Heavenly Father, and we just glorify you for just teaching us and instructing us and guiding us in the way that we should go. Father God, we thank you for your patience. We thank you for your graciousness. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your kindness and your love, your unconditional love. Father God, we thank you for not allowing us to, to live a life that will cause us to, to have our days cut short, Lord. We thank you for the wisdom that you imparted and that you allowed um, Solomon to, to, to add to your word, Lord God. Father God, we thank you, Heavenly Father, that you are showing us, Lord God, how to self-correct, Lord. You're helping us, Heavenly Father, to be introspective and to assess the areas of our lives that we need to heal from, Lord God. Father God, we just repent right now in the name of Jesus for the things that we have said that did not align with your word. We repent for the things that we have done, Lord, that did not align with your word. Father God, we thank you, Lord, that when we come before you and we repent those things that are not of you and we renounce those ungodly habits and covenants that were made, Lord God, that you are faithful, Heavenly Father, too 
forgive us and give us another opportunity to live a life that is pleasing to you, Lord God. Father God, we want to be like the righteous, Lord. We want to receive all the, the spiritual blessings that you have made available for us, Lord God. Father God, we want to be, um, we want to experience the wealth, Lord God, that allows us to be fortified, Lord. We want to experience long life, Heavenly Father. Lord God, we desire to experience, Lord God, the the increase that comes with knowing you, Lord God. And when we say increase, Lord, we're not just speaking of um, material things, Lord God, but increase in the spirit, in the gifts of, in the fruit of the spirit, increase heavenly father in a relationship with you, Lord God, increase in being, being allowed, Lord God, to, to walk in um, certain authority and walk in certain abilities, Lord God, because we remain faithful to you. Father God, if there is any area of our life, Heavenly Father, that we have not fully surrendered, Lord God, then Lord, we lay it upon your feet right now, Lord God. And we just ask that you will forgive us, Lord, for not stewarding well what you have given us, even if it's our abilities, even if it's an idea, if it's a gifting. Lord God, forgive us for not operating fully in it, Heavenly Father. Lord God, I pray that you will begin to continue to send people who are connected to the divine vision that you have for us, Lord, that we would be able to walk, Lord, in the authority that has been given to us as your children, Heavenly Father. Father God, I pray that you will continue to help us to tame our tongue, Lord. We recognize it is not something we can do out of our own might, Heavenly Father, but Lord, with the Holy Spirit, we are able to, to prevent ourselves from saying certain things that will be would activate word curses in our life, Lord. Father God, in fact, we repent for saying things, Lord God, that were word curses upon other people and even ourselves, Heavenly Father. Father God, we cancel and we destroy and dismantle every ill word that has been spoken over our lives. And we declare and decree that it has no authority, Lord God. Lord God, we thank you, Heavenly Father, Lord, that no weapon formed against any aspect of our life, Heavenly Father, shall be formed no weapon formed against us in any aspect of our life, Lord God, shall prosper, Lord. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that every tongue that rises up against us in condemnation, Lord God, will be judged by you, Heavenly Father. Father God, we thank you, Heavenly Father, that you have chosen us on this time, Lord, to be to represent you, Lord God. We thank you, Father, that you have chosen us, Lord, to walk in righteousness, Heavenly Father. We thank you, Lord God, that you have chosen us, Heavenly Father, to speak life, Lord. Heavenly Father, help us to speak life into every single person that we interact with. Father God, if we are ever <clears throat> tempted or tested in any way to, to react, Lord, silence our lips, Heavenly Father. Let us not utter anything that is uh, not of you, Heavenly Father. Fill us with the spirit of self-control, Lord, that we will be mindful, Lord God, of the way that we respond, that we will be mindful of our emotions, Lord God, that you will give us the wisdom to help us to know when to keep our mouth closed, Lord God, and when to speak. Speak, Lord. We thank you, Lord God, that you are constantly filling us with your wisdom. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that as we read each scripture, Lord God, it's becoming embedded and written upon our hearts, Lord God. We thank you for an instant implementation of your word, Heavenly Father. Even today, Lord, that you are you are creating opportunities for us to walk out your word, for us to walk out the wisdom that you are imparting to us even now, Lord God. Father God, I just thank you, Lord, for the hearts and the minds of every single person on this call. I I thank you for the hunger and the yearning that they have, Heavenly Father, to go, to draw near to you, to grow deeper, Lord God. Father God, there is so much you desire for us to do in this up in this seat in this current season and the upcoming season. So, Father God, we will not be idle. We will not be lazy, Heavenly Father. We will be strategic and wise like ants, Lord God. Father God, we will store up all the knowledge that you desire for us to store up, Lord God. We will operate, Lord God, and we will operate fully and be prepared for the seasons that you have for us, Heavenly Father. Lord God, we will not um, allow this time to be um, to be misused, Heavenly Father. Father God, I thank you, Lord, that you just keep highlighting stewardship. So, Father God, we will steward what you have have given us well. We will steward the giftings, the talents, Lord God. We will steward the relationships, the finances, Lord God. We will steward the vision, Lord God. We will steward the jobs, Lord God. Everything that you have given us, Father God, we will steward it well, Lord, because we know that it glorifies you. It brings glory. It brings honor to you, Heavenly Father. So, Father God, even now, Lord God, I just pray that we just spend time allowing the Word of God to saturate our hearts, Lord. Let us not be um 
Let us not be haughty. Let us not think we know it all, Father God. There is always another level of revelation that you desire to to, to pour into us, Heavenly Father. So, Lord, I just pray for a fresh wind of um, revelation, Lord God, that every single person, Lord, would, would go would see something different in your word today, Lord God, and that it would reignite a fire and a hunger, Lord God, for your word, Heavenly Father. Lord God, we thank you that your word is alive, living, and active. We thank you that we hear you every time we, we read it, Lord God. We thank you for the revelation. We thank you for the impartation. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for the instruction. We thank you, Lord God, that through your word and wisdom, Heavenly Father, that you make every crooked path straight, Heavenly Father, and that you guide us in the way that we should go. We thank you, Lord, for all the times that we avoided things and we did not even realize it, Lord God. We thank you that because of our faithfulness to you, that you not even that, Lord, because you are faithful, Heavenly Father, we can be faithful to you, Lord God. And in that faithfulness, Lord, we can trust that you will ensure that all of our needs are met, Heavenly Father. And you are so wonderful to us, Lord. You go beyond even our needs and you fulfill even some of the hidden wants that we have in our heart, Lord God. So, Lord, we just thank you and we praise your name, Heavenly Father. And I pray, Lord, that on this Saturday, Lord, that you would just continue to just empower every single person on this call, Lord. I pray that you give them a fresh wind of joy, Lord God, and peace, Heavenly Father. Lord God, that the woes of this of the of the week, Lord God, are in the past, Heavenly Father, that we will look to today, that we will look to to, to tomorrow, being grateful, being um being blessed, understanding that, Lord, you have done so much. You have protected us from so much things that we don't even know about yet, Lord. And so we give you all the honor and the glory and the praise, Lord God. And we seal these prayers with the blood of Jesus, Lord God. And we declare and decree, Lord God, there will be no backlash or retaliation. In fact, we declare and decree that there will be an abundance of peace and joy. There will be an abundance of love, Lord God. There will be an abundance of clarity, Lord God. There will be an abundance of revelation and impartation. There will be an abundance of of um, healing and deliverance. There will be an abundance, Heavenly Father, of answer prayers, Father God. Lord, we just thank you, Lord, that on this day, Heavenly Father, there is breakthrough taking place, Heavenly Father. And Lord, that breakthrough is being activated by you, Lord God, and through you, Heavenly Father. And there will be testimonies on this day, Heavenly Father. So Lord, we thank you for your wisdom. We thank you for entrusting us to walk out your wisdom, Heavenly Father. And we give you all the glory and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So thank you all for joining today. I know it was shorter, but um, I do recognize that this chapter in particular just had a lot of different nuggets of wisdom that um, we can go through and, you know, assess, uh, process, internalize. And I just pray that you'll take the time to go back and just let the Holy Spirit speak to you in regards to what he's telling you about this particular chapter. And so thank you once again. Um, a reminder, in a few hours, like um, four hours, um, well, three and a half, we'll have the Ash Exchange International Second Virtual Women's Conference. And if you haven't registered, go ahead and register. If you did, um, you know, be expectant. I'm excited to see you all. Well, I won't be able to see because it's webinar style. But um, you can type in the chat so I'll see your name. And, um, but I am excited to see what God is going to do. I know he's going to do some amazing things. I know it's going to be powerful. Um, if you have a friend who still needs to register, make sure you get their information in. Um, those of you who do attend, you will be included in giveaways and whatnot. And, um, and yeah, I just, it's just going to be an amazing time for us to just gather as women and be poured into and, um, you know, make sure you have a pen, pencil, and your Bible, because the Holy Spirit is going to be speaking very heavily um, throughout this conference, and I don't want you to leave missing anything. Um, in fact, you will leave more empowered, more, more understanding of what God needs you to do as we are finishing off this month. So I thank you all. Uh, thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for waking up, even though some of you are coming to the conference. Feel free to go back and take a nap until it's time to start. Uh, but I love you all. I'm grateful for you all. And, um, you know, just want y'all to have an amazing day. So take care. Bye.